everybody. We're here today with Clayton Family Kitchen and we have some special guests. These are the ladies of the Southern Mercantile. It's an online shop and blog. So they're going to show you one of their favorite recipes today and I'm going to hand it over to them. Y'all go ahead. We are so happy to be here sharing this with y'all today. Um, we're going to make a recipe called the Peach Beehive. Um, my name is Roxy. I'm Georgianne. I'm Tara. And we um, own and operate the shops at 4th and Cherry here in Osceola, Georgia. And our latest venture is the Southern Mercantile, which is our online store and blog, um, where we get to share wonderful recipes like we're going to show you today. So I'm going to let Georgianne and Tara go ahead and get started. Um, they're going to show you how to wrap the peaches um, before you bake them. you want to do is you want to choose uh, large peaches for the peach bee hives and you want to wash them and then let them dry just a little bit on the on a towel so they'll be a little bit damp still before you wrap them. Okay and you're going to use your store-bought pie crust that you can find in the freezer section and the first thing you want to do is unroll it and you want to cut it into strips about a half an inch so you can go ahead and cut a good bit of the pie crust. This recipe will make about 10 to 12 beehives. Um, and for that, you're going to need uh, we, at least three full pie crusts cut into strips. So when you start to wrap the peaches, you want to start on the stem end. If there is a little bit of a stem, you can go ahead and use a knife and, and cut that out. Um, just pop it out real easily. Um, and then start wrapping the pie crust at the stem end. And then when you put it in the dish, you're going to put it upside down into the dish. And so as you're wrapping, you're going to pull the pie crust a little bit and make sure that it's attaching to the pie crust above it and also to the peach. That way, whenever it bakes, it doesn't slip off. And as you wrap it, it's, that's how it starts to look like a beehive. While they're wrapping, I'll just tell you, this is one of my dad's recipes. He is a wonderful cook. He worked for a caterer in college, and that's where he first learned to make these. And he's just perfected the recipe over the years. And um, we just happen to live in Georgia where you can get the freshest, most beautiful peaches. Um, our peaches came from Pearson Farms. Um, that's our favorite place to buy peaches. It's just a quaint farm. You can go and watch them packing the peaches there. Um, they do have a website where you can order. Um, and we also are good friends at the Peach Truck. You can order online from them as well. So if you live in an area where you can't get good fresh peaches um, during peach season, you can order them from thepeachtruck.com. Um, and peach season is almost over here in Georgia, but you probably would still be able to get good peaches at your grocery store. One thing you want to be sure to do is to pull the pie crust strips a little bit as you go so that you don't end up using too much crust. And you want to make sure that it attaches to the previous layer that you've wrapped. This is one of the recipes that we serve in the cafe, uh, which is located in the shops at 4th and Cherry here in Osceola. And it is uh, a real showstopper of a dessert. and People look forward to it every year. They come in asking, when are the peach beehives going to be ready? All right, so we finished wrapping our beehives. Um, this is the end that we started with, so we're going to flip it over. This is the end that we finished with, and we'll flip it over and put it in the pan. And then each beehive will get a little pat of butter on top. And then you're going to bake them. Uh, at 350, 350 for one hour and after one hour they'll come out of your oven looking beautiful like this so you're going to want to let those cool for just a few minutes 
and go ahead and put them in the dish that you're going to serve them in before you start making the sauce. The sauce is a little labor intensive. You're not going to be able to leave it for a long period of time. So you want to have these in the dish ready to go um, so that as soon as your sauce is done, you can go ahead and top the beehives. So I'm going to let Tara and Georgianne put the beehives on the plates and I'm going to teach you how to make the sauce. go ahead and make the hard brandy sauce to top the peach beehives. I have melted one stick of butter in my pot. Um, I prefer to use um, a cast iron heavy pot like this, but you can certainly make it in a stainless steel pot. I've done that many times. I just like the way that this heats better. Um, so when you're making the sauce, you've got your melted butter. You're going to add your four cups of sugar but you're gonna add it a little at a time. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and put in some of your powdered sugar and just get it stirred. Get everything mixed together. Don't worry, it's gonna look a little lumpy in the beginning, um, but the more, you're, believe me, you're gonna stir this for the next 10 minutes, so all the lumps will be stirred out. Um, so just go ahead and add a little more. You're gonna keep adding powdered sugar until it gets really stiff and balled up. And then when that happens, we're going to add a little heavy whipping cream, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, I've gotten to the point that my sauce is starting to really thicken, so I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of heavy whipping cream to get things loosened up a bit before I add the next little batch of powdered sugar. to add it just about a half a cup or a cup at a time. Um, if you add too much at one time, it's going to get so thick that you're really going to have a hard time dealing with it. And be prepared because you're going to have powdered sugar all over your kitchen. I'm going to go ahead and add a little more of the heavy whipping cream. And right now I've got the eye on a very low heat because um, you just really want to take your time to do this. If you try to rush it, you definitely uh, run the risk of burning your sauce. Go ahead and add the rest of the powdered sugar. Alright, at this point you can see my sauce is ni nice and thick. It's smoothing out. This is the point where we're going to add the two egg yolks. You need to be sure and temper the eggs first, um, which means you're going to take a little bit of your hot sauce and put it in your eggs, beat them up. That's going to kind of bring them to the same temperature as your sauce so when you add them in, your eggs won't scramble, hopefully, when they hit the hot pot. Dip in, get a little, put it in with my eggs, get it nice and mixed up. And I like to kind of create just a little pocket in my sauce. I don't like the eggs to immediately touch the pot when they go in because then you it just gives you a greater risk of scrambling them. So dump my eggs in. And then just gonna start to fold my sauce mixture up with the egg yolks. And at this point, I'm gonna raise the heat on the burner just a little bit because once you've got your eggs mixed in, you're gonna to wanna to bring the sauce to a boil and you have to let it boil for two minutes. In this particular pot, I still don't raise the temperature too high. I've got mine on four and a half. A pot like this is gonna hold the temperature real well. 
and you just don't want to burn it. And the whole time while you're bringing it to a boil and while it's boiling, you're still going to need to give it a stir because you don't want it to stick to the bottom or start to, to harden on the sides. Okay, our sauce has been boiling for two minutes. I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off. Keep stirring, and I'm actually going to just set my pot on the eye that's not as hot. And now we're going to slowly add the brandy. It's a quarter cup of brandy, so it's not a whole lot. It is going to foam up when you pour it in the pot, so you just want to be careful and not do all of it at one time. Add a little more. You can hear it sizzling and I wish you could smell it because it smells so good. And just continue to stir that until it thickens back up just a little bit. And this sauce, once you pour it over the peaches, it's going to harden very fast. So if you're making this at home, like I said, you want to go ahead and have all your peaches in their individual serving dishes so that you can just pour the sauce over every one and it's going to go ahead and harden in that dish. You have a kind of limited time window to make this happen. All right, we've got everything stirred in and incorporated. I'm just going to move over and pour some on the peach. All right, we've finished our sauce and now we're going to top the beehives. After you pour the sauce over, you want to just garnish it with a little nutmeg and we like to put a little fresh mint, it just makes it pretty. So here we go. Just want to drizzle it over the top and it'll kind of make its own pretty little glaze. You can see it's already kind of starting to harden up. And it's so good, you don't want to be chintzy with the sauce. I have a friend that calls it brandy candy. <laughs> You're good to go. This dessert is perfect to kind of show off and make a beautiful southern statement at your next gathering. You can make them ahead of time. You can certainly bake the peaches ahead of time and wait and just mix up the sauce a little closer to your event and have them made and ready to go when your guests get there. Um, so we thank you for watching. Um, we have been thrilled to be here and be a part of Clayton Family Kitchen for the day. Um, if you like our aprons or any of our dishes, we encourage you to check out our store at southernmercantile.com. Um, you can also join our recipe club there. You can print out this recipe card as well as many others and we hope that you'll try this at home. And We would love for you to share on the blog your experience with making peach beehives. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.